It's common knowledge that there's a trillion dollar funding gap to achieving the sustainable development goals. And that's meant that the development industry is changing. It's moving to a dynamic that has more of a focus on private sector driven development. And one of the results has been the rise of DFIs. Countries are increasingly looking to their development finance institutions to help fund solutions that create jobs and economic opportunity and address this issue of economic development. DFIs often provide support to companies or funds in the form of loans or equity investment or loan guarantees to help reduce risk. There are now 17 bilateral DFIs. The US this year is getting ready to launch a new DFI. It's updated and it will be able to spend twice as much as OPEC can today. Last year, Canada opened a DFI. Australia is thinking of starting one. And in the UK, the CDC group has received an influx of money in the last few years. There's not only growth in the number of DFIs, but also in the amount of money that they're spending. DevEx did some research looking at the publicly available data. And one of the things we found was that between 2012 and 2017, bilateral DFIs increased their spending by more than 50%. And that growth seems likely to continue. And while we have been able to look at this data, one of the things we've learned in the process is that there's a lot of diversity in how DFIs report on the investments that they make. And some of them actually either don't publicly make data available or make it very hard to access. They will report on things like job creation and tax creation and the type of economic growth that might result from their investments. But one of the challenges is really looking at the indirect effects. Are there job displacements that might be happening as the result of an investment? What are the types of quality of jobs that are happening? What is the broader impact on the economy beyond the direct impact of the project? Several of the experts DevEx has spoken to about this say there really is a need for coordination because more cooperation on this issue could create more industry standardization. And as there's more standardization, there's a greater understanding of risk. And so then DFIs might be willing to go into more challenging environments. And in fact, going into these more difficult countries is something that a lot of DFIs are talking about doing. But DFIs are still sometimes struggling with how to do this, how to find the projects to invest in, how to effectively assess risk, and how at the same time to balance the needs to continue to make a profit. And despite this stated intent of investing more in least developed countries, our analysis found that only 29 of the 47 countries that are designated as least developed countries received financing from development finance institutions in 2017. It's definitely true that as their profile is rising, as more money is being spent by these DFIs, they are facing more scrutiny. And that's leading to more of these conversations about measurement and transparency. And the fact is that DFIs have not always gotten it right. One example is Barro Blanco. It's a hydropower plant in Panama. It was an investment by DEG and FMO. And in that investment, which was to build a dam, there was displacement of the local communities. There ended up being issues with land compensation, and there was significant economic disruption for the indigenous people living there. But FMO and DEG did take action to change things after this project went wrong. They initiated a review of the independent complaints mechanism. They updated some of their performance standards, and they updated their sustainability policy with a particular focus on high risk projects and the impacts on the local communities. And that's been the result in many cases. You've seen DFI due diligence processes and evaluation and monitoring processes adapt as the result of some of these projects that have gone wrong. And so as the profile of DFIs rise and they play a bigger role in the development discourse, they're gonna to continue to have to figure out how are they measuring and proving their impact? What is their role in least developed countries in the bottom of the pyramids and how can they invest and create the right pipelines for investments in those environments? DevEx will continue to track the role of DFIs in the development landscape, their growth, their investments, their challenges. So stay tuned to DevX for much more.